Welcome back to Fascinating History, where today we will be discussing Napoleon's rise and eventual fall from power. Known for his indomitable will, tactical genius, and insatiable ambition, he took the world by storm, wielding the power of the French army to carve an empire that reached as far as Russia. But his story contains more than just battles and politics. It's filled with surprising tidbits that reveal a man beyond the battlefield. Did you know, for instance, that despite being famed as the Emperor of the French, Napoleon himself wasn't actually French by birth? He was born and raised in Corsica, which only became a French territory a year before his birth in 1769. Here, beneath the vast shadow of this titan of history, we dive into an intricate saga that transcends time and space, illuminating the legend that is Napoleon. Napoleon's Childhood To begin with, Napoleon was a privileged child from birth. And why so? Let's zoom into his life to understand why he was privileged. Listen, Napoleon was the second born of eight children. His father, Carlo Bonaparte, was a proficient lawyer who had fought for the Corsican independence from the Genoese. His mother, Letizia Ramorino, was a noblewoman who came from a wealthy family. Therefore, unlike many of his peers, Napoleon was exposed to the politics and nobility life had to offer. As such, these little facts prove that Napoleon had a privileged life, and so, if that doesn't convince you or you wouldn't buy into it, at least attest to the fact that he grew up surrounded by politics. And what can you tell by looking at this? Obviously, he had to grow into a politician, but a terrific one. At the tender age of nine, Napoleon was dispatched to a military academy in France, a pivot that marked the dawn of his remarkable journey. Exhibiting an extraordinary capacity to grasp and adapt, he progressed rapidly his understanding and knowledge expanding at an impressive pace. By the age of 16, he had risen to the rank of captain, and a mere eight years later, he was known as a brigadier general at 24. In essence, the seeds of ambition and tenacity were planted early in Napoleon's life. His ceaseless pursuit of excellence, his readiness to step into the unknown, to gamble for his aspirations, all served to shape him into one of history's most formidable military and political leaders. It's worth noting how pivotal his formative years were in molding the astute emperor he was destined to become. The cocktail of early political exposure, rigorous military training, and unyielding ambition coalesced, empowering him to metamorphose into an impactful leader who achieved feats that continue to baffle the minds of many. By this time, Napoleon had started showing that he was destined for greatness, and in the following segment, we will look into that. Napoleon's Rise to Power Napoleon Bonaparte's impact on European history is unquestionable, as his name frequently comes up among the continent's most influential personalities. His career in the military kicked off in 1785, when he secured a position as a second lieutenant in a French artillery regiment. Napoleon's star rose swiftly, and before long, he donned the mantle of a general. Napoleon's reputation as a military tactician was impressive, underscored by his innovative strategies and mastery of battlefield deception. His knack for orchestrating surprise assaults gave him a significant advantage, as did his talent for inspiring and leading his soldiers to victory. Napoleon's era was marked by a series of significant events, among which a few standout achievements merit special attention. In 1798, he spearheaded a triumphant campaign in Egypt, a notable accomplishment for France. His decisive victory against the Austrians in the Battle of Marengo in 1800 further cemented his status as a military prodigy. As he continued to seize territory with his formidable forces, Napoleon's influence expanded far and wide. Napoleon's most famous victory came in 1805 at the Battle of Austerlitz, defeating a combined force of Austrians and Russians. This victory earned him the title of Emperor of the French. At the height of the French Revolution, a higher level was attained, and by attaining such a 
rank, Napoleon felt like he had the moon under his feet, or perhaps a wild horse tied to the yoke. You can imagine how unruly either of these scenarios could be. Napoleon continued to lead his troops to victory, but eventually his luck ran out. He wanted more. Power got into his head, and despite conquering large parts of Europe, he was never content. Not by any chance. His hunger for more was off the roof. It had no boundaries, completely insatiable. Think of it like gasoline to the fire. The Fall of Napoleon In 1812, he invaded Russia, but his army was decimated by the harsh Russian winter. This defeat marked the beginning of Napoleon's downfall, or let's say, a tumbling tower, but at best, the beginning of the end. Despite his eventual defeat, Napoleon's military career was one of the most impressive in history. His innovative tactics and strategic genius changed the face of warfare forever. Contrary to his tactical plans, Napoleon subtly had a fault line, a weakness to his successful run of wins. But what were these weaknesses that Napoleon faced? Strangely, as you may imagine, from a proficient warlord, Napoleon feared cats, and he would visibly become uncomfortable and agitated in the presence of cats. But again, there was always a thing about these ancient world leaders. They had habits and quirks that were hard to understand. For instance, Catherine the Great, the Empress of Russia, had a collection of erotic furniture kept in a special room. For this one, please don't giggle. Again, don't giggle. Mao Zedong, the founder of the People's Republic of China, believed brushing his teeth would damage his spiritual energy, and so he hardly brushed his teeth. Okay, to a degree, this was weird. So besides Napoleon, every other one of these leaders had a quirk that often surfaced as a weakness. But for Napoleon, there was more. It wasn't only about the cats. Too much of something is not always a good thing, including power. Napoleon had become so powerful that it started getting into his mind, which was a weakness to all he had gained. Let's dig into that and see what happened. Napoleon's Exile On the night of February 26, 1815, Napoleon Bonaparte, the former Emperor of France, escaped from the island of Elba. After being exiled there by the Allies, he lived comfortably for the last 10 months. However, he was determined to regain his throne and restore his power. Napoleon had planned his escape meticulously. He had recruited a small band of loyalists to help him and even rented a small fishing boat to take him across the Mediterranean Sea to France. He had also arranged for a decoy to distract the Elba guard while he escaped. At 10 p.m., under the night's darkness, Napoleon and his men made their way to the docks. They boarded the fishing boat and set sail, and after a short while, they reached the French coast. Napoleon was welcomed with open arms by the people of France, who had missed their beloved leader. He quickly regained his power and began to rebuild his empire. On March 20, 1815, Napoleon entered Paris in triumph. Cheering crowds and a grand parade received him. Napoleon's return to power was short-lived, however. On June 18, 1815, he was defeated at the Battle of Waterloo, and unfortunately, he was exiled again, this time to the island of St. Helena. Despite the eventual outcome, Napoleon's daring escape from Elba remains one of the most remarkable feats of his career. It was a bold move, and one that will never be forgotten. This is the sad part now. Arguably, everything comes to an end. However, in the case of Napoleon, the French wanted an immortal leader, but no man is immortal. Napoleon's Final Years Napoleon Bonaparte, the former Emperor of France, arrived on the remote island of St. Helena on October 15, 1815. He was being exiled there by the British, who were determined to keep him from ever regaining power. Though Napoleon was initially allowed to move about the island freely, he was eventually placed under house arrest at Longwood House. The house was in disrepair, and the British refused to provide any funds for repairs or improvements. Napoleon was forced to make do with what he had. For the next six years, Napoleon lived a quiet life on the island. 
surrounded by a small group of loyal followers. He was allowed to take walks and ride horses, but the British kept a close eye on him. During this time, Napoleon wrote extensively about his life and thoughts. He also began to develop an interest in horticulture and spent much of his time tending to the gardens of Longwood House. In 1821, Napoleon's health began to deteriorate acutely, and he died on May 5, 1821. His death was a shock to many, but his legacy as one of history's greatest military leaders has endured. What other facts do you know about Napoleon? Please let us know your responses in the comment section below, and don't forget to like and share. Also, hit the subscribe button to find notifications on the latest uploads on the channel, and as always, see you in the next video.